If you're not going to do it now, when are you going to do it? That's why there's certain entrepreneurs that pave the way or that are trailblazers because they have that zero fear factor. Today, we're joined by Rajan Harun Hashemi. Rajan is the founder of Maison Rajan, a company specializing in bespoke interior and homeware design. With an obsessive eye for detail and a passion for perfecting the elements of design with each project, Rajan and her team help reimagine high end offices, retail stores, embassies, and private residences, bringing an emotional connection back into every space they work on. Join us today as we catch up with Rajan to discuss her approach to business and how she focuses her energy to achieve success in her life and her career. Ray, there you are. Hey! <laughs> Welcome to you. Oh, thank you so much. It's wonderful to see you. This is cozy. Is it not? You're the owner and creator of Maison Rajan. And you designed some of the most breathtaking interiors oh. in the city um, and beyond. Oh, that's I mean, so kind. I mean, I'm dying to know, like, where did it yeah. start? My early 20s, I ended up opening a spa, a beauty spa, not like a, a grocery store, which actually that would have been great because I would have loved a grocery store too. But no, this was a beauty spa. And I designed the interiors that had a very French aesthetic. But in the process of setting up the space, I loved doing the interiors more than running that business. Oh, wow. And... It got into all these amazing magazines and I was so grateful. We got such exposure because the space was different and it was really beautiful. And again, it was all about the energy of the space. So people were coming in and the interiors were doing more of the work than the, the treatments that they were coming for. And at that moment, I realized I have a talent here and a gift here, which is to make things beautiful. Yes. And I think that's how it started. I failed dismally at that business though, let me tell you. Oh, yeah. But it was the best because that was my, I would call that my business science degree. It pushed me to pursue the interiors because if I'd stayed in that business, stayed in that industry, I wouldn't have found my true calling. Yes. And people always expect, they see now the highlights reel. So they see, oh, the success or, oh, she's doing the embassies or the private residences. But the backstory is as important. So, and it starts from even as young as the 11 year old girl buying bubble furniture. Yes. <laughs> yeah. You suggested about entering a space and a space mm. having energy. Are you saying that we enter a space and mm. many of us are not even conscious of how that space makes us feel? Completely. So I did a corporate space recently, um, amazing hedge fund office, and the client was such a dynamic individual, very inspiring. And I handed the space over and there, it's funny because it's not just handing the interior over afterwards, there's still a process there after. Right. So I call in this woman that I have aligned the spaces. It's almost like a feng shui, a balance on the space. And interestingly enough, that building was a cold storage for years. And oh. so the fire element in the business dropped and you need fire in a business of course it's the, the energy of fire so I had had the whole space balance with the CEO in mind and now it draws the right people in the staff that sit there are in an environment that is energetically balanced which is key so just like you eat good food to keep your body healthy yes you read things to grow your mind energy is huge and how do you tackle energy if people aren't conscious of it it's through the interiors so my business is not just oh let's make something beautiful or let's make the house pretty it goes way beyond that um and so the the energy part is 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 huge for me because you can really shift people's lives through an interior space i mean i find that like a multi-layered approach to looking at something mm. you're not just looking at something Mm -mm. at the surface or even just the aesthetic. I mean, you're going into a, like you're seeing something more. I mean, mm. I find it fascinating that they moved into a, what was a cold storage before mm. and it literally affected, as you mentioned, mm. this the fire with the dynamics within, within mm. their business. I mean, my style is a bit over the top, <laughs> but I'm proud how of would, it. How would you describe that? Like, uh, it's, it's bold. I don't cut corners. Everything should be aspirational. Have the marble wall. <laughs> Have right. the frameless glass. I like a bold interior, but it mustn't be pretentious and it needs to be welcoming. And how you make it welcoming is with good design, it's layering, but like in the corporate space, if the staff are coming into the space and it seems uh, intimidating because it's so beautiful, it's so pristine, it's so polished, 
uh, I have a different opinion. I think no, I think it's good. I think it's aspirational. Right. If they're sitting working at their computer and they go to the little cafeteria area or the pause area or the meeting room and the space is exquisitely beautiful. They are proud to meet with clients there. The staff go home knowing every single day they get to come back to that space and they start to create that reality in their everyday life. It's like if your home is beautiful uh, and it's comfortable, you create more of the same because you're attracting more of the same. Right. Why do you love going to a gorgeous hotel and you completely switch off and completely unwind and immerse yourself in the environment? Then you come home and you're all, you're all of a sudden refreshed and inspired, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. What got you there? The Absolutely. space and the environment. So interiors are more than just an interior. It's, a, it's an environment, it's an energy. Have there been moments in your life, let's say moments of setback mm. or moments of failure, for lack of a better word, where you've had an opportunity to relook at your business or your life differently? Definitely. I think... Uh, Everything in life is how you look at it. Setbacks can really knock you off your feet, but if you look at things as though they are lessons and experiences rather than something negative, picture how that whole shift happens, how you, how you look at a situation. So mm. two very key moments was the one I touched on earlier where I had the spa and I realized the business wasn't for me because I wasn't passionate about it. So there was the lesson. And a second setback, I would say, or experience was trying to restrain myself. I don't know if you can tell, but I'm not someone who likes to be restrained. When I yes. say restrain, I mean, you can do a lot of things and you can have a lot of experience and a lot of skills. But this life puts us all in a box in that Either you're an architect or you're a business person or you're an accountant or you're an actor or you're, a, um, you're in production or whatever. You don't get taken seriously if you do more than one thing. And the minute I dropped that and embraced the fact that I have other skills, there are no rules, there are no I need to follow and be it in a certain way and I actually exploded in every element of my life and everything started coming to me. So my big experience and setback was to not limit myself. And when I became limitless in my mindset, uh, my interiors improved. Sure. I was able to expand the business. I was able to diversify my service offering. It's now encompassing all those elements and it's about bringing other people in and letting that spill over into all of them. That was a big one for me because it's, it's brought me into a whole new experience of the business now. Wow. So now listen, we've got some experiences coming about a little bit later. Are you, are you ready for a little bit of an experience a bit later on? Oh, yes. What is it? <laughs> it's very exciting. Yeah. Ray, there you are. <laughs> okay. Uh, nice to meet you. <laughs> yeah, it's that, it is a bit of a square shoulder. Oh. Let the games begin. Okay. So I tell you what, I'm going to call Sam in. Okay, cool. So Sam, we we are ready for you. <laughs> hey oh guys. gosh. So I've set up a little challenge for you guys. I want you to give me your best 20s Hollywood. Our Gatsby sort of theme is more in the neck. Ah, uh, okay, okay. And then I want you to go mad with the feathers, with the bandanas, mm. go crazy. And at the end, I'm gonna give a good crit. Okay. And then the winner will win the challenge. Oh my Got gosh, it? this is gonna be too fun. Cool, okay. good luck guys. Thanks. Thank you so much, Sam. Okay, I love that there's a pink scissor. I'm definitely grabbing that. Do you feel that within your business, yes. that you play different roles? Like, do you, do you feel that you sometimes have to switch something on mm. when dealing with a client? When you own your own business, you have to wear many different hats. So you, right. you, you can't just, uh, do the creative, fun, pretty stuff. There are certain administrative things that you have to do. There's client services. And I mean, it depends on the size of your team or if you, you know, you, you, it's just you. Um, if it's just you, then you, then you have to play every single role. And it has just been me. And I've literally been, uh, 
the answering the, the phone, capturing my vat, <laughs> designing the work, installing the work. You do uh, all of these things. I, I, well, I did. Now, obviously, I've grown the business and I've, I've, I've got a team and I've also, I've appointed different people in different roles. But, but you're completely right in that you have to be um, gosh, what is the word I used it the other day? I don't know why I'm cutting this poor mannequin's head like a boy cut. By the way, I'm copying you, so I hope. You... <laughs> I'm trying to create a, a layer and a stagger, and I don't know if I'm achieving it. And I'm glad this isn't a human <laughs> that we're that we're working on because they would have been like, "Who did you get in here today?" Um, it's quite interesting also now trying to, I, I'm a multitasker, I'm a woman, and this is what we do. But yeah. I'm trying to think of what you asked me and cut this woman's hair. Because you see, I have, this is the thing, I can't, I'm like, I, because when you when you meet <laughs> fascinating, innovative people, you're just compelled to want to know everything. And, I'm, and I know that, <laughs> I know that there are many people out there that, that want to know. Yes. Because, because one of the things is that you speak about the various roles that you play within the business, but then, yes. like in times of challenge, like mm. in the moment, like you, I'm sure you've had moments where you've met and spoken to wonderful clients. Have there been moments when they've been potentially difficult clients mm -hmm. and you've needed to sort of call on a resource within that conversation? Like what happens then? Yeah, so biggest lesson and it's a recent one. This is like a mic drop moment and we all know it and we say it, but we don't actually follow it. Boundaries. Just tell us a bit more about boundaries. You know, sometimes clients, because of the level of service and the level of excellence you provide in your life, they can take that as blurred lines and that you're willing to go right. above and beyond, which you are always, but within reason. Same with your with your staff. You can't be besties or best friends with your staff. Sorry, I need to grab these jewels before you do. I, I know that you don't only do interior design, yes. but more specifically, you're an actor as well. Yes, that was my first, I would say my first love, my first passion. And I love the industry. The frustrating part of the industry is you have no control. So you don't have control over what director you get put in front of, what um, casting agent lets you come and audition. And for my kind of personality, I, uh, the not having control of my outcome or my destiny yes. uh, became a huge problem for me. So then I was faced with, hmm, what now? Because my heart and my passion is there, but I can't uh, turn it into something or that's really successful because I'm having no control of who's getting to see me at auditions, etc. And so Tom Ford, my one of my muses, he realized he was also an actor and he oh, got it? into fashion and his passion has always been film and I mean if you look at a single man he ended up getting an Oscar nomination as a director for his first film. He articulated what I was feeling so well where he said he could no longer he couldn't handle that he couldn't control the outcome of his life and so he realized there is still a means of getting to that end destination because the time is going to pass anyway and it's just it's just a longer journey. So he still had the vision of ending up in acting. Yes. So with with the interiors, I shot a, a short film where I was able to fund it from my interior work. So that kind of was symbolic of exactly kind of what Tom said, obviously on a much smaller scale, but in that the interiors got me the income to be able to create the the short film. So I was able to feed another passion via uh, my business. Yeah, there is a way and a means to everything. It's just, it, it's it's just look approaching everything differently. Yes. Looking at, at possibility differently. What would you say to that person sitting out there now who hasn't necessarily found that driving passion? Well, you're not thing? supposed to know what you want to do when you're this young. Not everybody is drawn to something right off the bat. It takes life experience to, yes. to find what you're really passionate about but obviously that doesn't mean sit around now and wait around for the time to pass or for it to hit you like a ton of bricks yes the japanese have this uh, it's called igikai which is the, the the things that make you happy so it's sense of community it's uh, well, family it's um, purpose and purposes even could be raking a lawn or mowing a lawn or 
going to school or making the, the coffee for the family or whatever the purpose is, it's, it's focusing. That really is the key. You might end up realizing, oh, you're a creative because you're inspired by, I don't know what, on your walk to yes. that daily act of purpose that you yes. have to do. Apply yourself daily in whatever it is that you're currently doing. Are you saying do that even though the passion you, hasn't come. Yeah, the, exactly. It'll come. It's this fear that people have when they are sitting and they're 18 years old or 19 years old or even 45 years old and they don't know what the next step is. Yes. The step comes, but you have to have the application every single day in your life and the things reveal themselves to you. You, you become open to it. It'll come. Daily so talking about, you know, the next step or mm. one more step along the way, What's next for you? Oh. Gosh, the sky's the limit. <laughs> no. We know that you have a project, but you're not telling us a, a yes. whole great deal about it. We know there's that. Tom Ford says, do something first, then talk about it. Right. Um, the thing I'm working on is something that I've been manifesting for years. It's an expansion on my existing service offering, but it's also bringing in other collaborators so that we can grow this so that it reaches more and more people benefit. And that whole abundant circle that I keep speaking of and that energy, it just keeps moving. Because that's all life is, money too. It's, it's all energy and it's all how you approach things. Yes. So this space that I'm going to create, this building as much as I'll say, is going to be the poster child of this dream and this vision. Wow. Um, so the, yeah, that's that's definitely next. Well, that's now because there is no next because the time because is now. now. Exactly. The time is now. So, I mean, we I'm going to be following your timeline keenly to know what oh, this thing is do. that you are creating. And thank you so much for coming to chat to us today. Oh, it was such a pleasure. Thank you. So Sam has got to come and check this out. Because oh. you've created all of this by yourself. <laughs> and I feel embarrassed just kind of looking at it in kind of oh, comparison. No, come on. No, 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 <laughs> Sam. Sam, girl. I feel like, feel like, you know, banging a drum. Yeah. Oh, gosh. They, well, he said he wanted wow. to bang a drum. Sure, I love the drum roll. I love these <laughs> styles though. Sure, you guys really went all it's out. I am going to give this one to you, Rachel. <laughs> oh, I hope this isn't sorry, great. Yeah. Wait, I'm so sorry. Well done, guys. Well thank done. You. Thank you. Thank you so much, guys. Sam. Bye. Ray. Thank you so much for coming to chat oh, to us today. Thank you. It's been an absolute pleasure chatting to you. And I, I know that the that the viewers watching this are going to be inspired. Oh, I, I hope so. I hope so. Ray, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. And thank you for joining us. And don't forget to subscribe to Barbonomics. And if you'd be so generous, just like what you saw. So that, you know, some more people will come and watch this. Thank you so much. And stay well. Ciao.